Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part two. In my last video, I was talking about the Strong's number for Yeshua, and um, I was explaining how Arthur Prudent mentioned this, that the Strong's number is 3444, and it seems to contain the formula for calculating how many different combinations there are of a sequence of three nucleotides which make up a codon for a total of 64 different combinations and he provided this link over here which seems to explain it and there's actually 20 different amino acids or 64 different combinations that code for the 20 different amino acids but I just wanted to explain that this is basically the purpose of the, the DNA code. The purpose is to code for the different amino acids and proteins. This is what actually turns the, the DNA code into life. This is how it carries out its function. Okay, so there was another really amazing comment over here by Arthur Prudent where he provided this link over here and in this link among other things it's talking about God's name and there's something really important in this link that I wanted to talk about but first I just wanted to share this information over here which is something I noticed uh, about God's name and again this seems to confirm that this is all about DNA and what I noticed is if you go to Genesis 1 and 2, you see that Elohim's kingdom ends over here with Genesis 2, 3. And by Elohim, I mean the word over here for God in the Hebrew in Genesis 1 is the, the word Elohim, which this is something that Jonathan Clegg has talked about. And if you look at the definition of this word, well, first of all, this is the the plural. Let me see, it says plural of this word over here, which is Eloha. I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but it's the word for God. The Elohim is the plural of that word, and it means rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods, with a little g. And so this would be who created in Genesis 1. And then it ends over here with Genesis 2, 3. So you have the number 23 right here. And then the first time you see the word, the Lord God, which is the word Lord capitalized in all caps, is actually the word Yahweh. It's the tetragrammaton or Yehovah and it's um, the, the existing one this is the name of God this is the tetragrammaton I like to pronounce it Yahweh but it could be pronounced Yehovah there's different ways to pronounce it and there may be one correct way but no one really knows the correct way I prefer Yahweh, but um, there's other opinions on how it should be pronounced. But this is the very first time you see the word Yahweh in the Bible. It starts out with Genesis 2 4. And so this would be God's kingdom. This is where it talks about Eden. And this is actually something that I had noticed even before Jonathan. Clegg started talking about this. I didn't notice the change in the name of the word God, but what I had noticed about Genesis 2 is that it seemed to be the, the reverse order of Genesis 1, because starting with Genesis 2, 4, it says these are the generations of the heaven and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. 
and that's the first time you see the word Lord God. And so it's like it's given a different account over here. And it says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and so this is the the first time that you see the word soul which is what I had talked about before in my last video but it seems to me that in this account that man is formed first because over here it says in every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground and the Lord God had formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul so it seems to me that all these things hadn't been created yet and then man was created first and also notice the word dust over here because if the watering was already taking place and the mist was already coming up then it wouldn't have been dust and if you look at the word dust in the Hebrew let's see what it is in the Hebrew it's um See, see the word powder here. It says dry earth, dust, powder, ashes, earth, ground, mortar, rubbish, dry or loose earth. So what I had noticed was that the earth was dry, it was dust. And so if the misting was already taking place, then it, it wouldn't have been dry. And so it appears that God formed man first. So this is in reverse order than the one in Genesis 1 and this is the account of Eden so this would be heaven and then the other thing that I had noticed and mind you this is before I had even heard Jonathan Cleck talk about this and like I said I hadn't noticed that it just says God in Genesis 1 and then it says the Lord God in Genesis 2 I hadn't noticed that but the other thing that I noticed was over here where it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth what I noticed is over here where it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What I noticed in the Greek is that the word for, instead of um, saying dark and void in the Greek, it says, And the earth was... Okay, I had to look up that first word. It means unseen or invisible. Okay, and the next word means not properly prepared, unfinished. Okay, so the earth was invisible or unseen and not properly prepared or unfinished and darkness upon the... And what I noticed was this word right here, which is the word abyss. And darkness was upon the abyss and the Spirit of God. Okay, that's interesting. I just looked this word up, and this word is actually the same word. It's actually Strong's number 2018, which is the word that means to inflict or to bring upon. Okay, I've talked about before how the Strong's number 2014 through 2017 are the word epiphany, which means light. And then it changes with Strong's 2018, and this means to bring upon or to inflict. Okay, so it's saying the earth was unseen and unfinished or not properly prepared, and darkness was upon the abyss. So the earth was the abyss. And the Spirit of the God inflicted upon it water, the waters. Okay, and then it goes on to say, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And so 
this is as Jonathan Clegg has explained this this is Elohim's kingdom because it doesn't say Lord God but it's also under the um, umbrella of God because God created everything and so there's two ways to look at this it's it's God's creation but this particular part from Genesis 1 to Genesis 2 3 Genesis 1 1 which looks like number 11 to Genesis 2 3 which is the number 23, and there's 23 chromosomes in a human body, is Elohim's kingdom. And then the kingdom of the Lord God begins with Genesis 2, 4. Okay, and so I've talked about how Jesus had 24 chromosomes, and this seems to correspond with the 24 ribs that man has, and then Adam gave one of his ribs to Eve. But if you look at the name Jesus in the New Testament, and I'll start out with Matthew 1.1 1, 1 because that's the first mention of the word Jesus in the New Testament. But if you look at the name Jesus in the New Testament, you see that it's Strong's number 2424. It's the word Isus. And by the way, this is not... Um, a pagan word or there's no conspiracy with the name Jesus that's um, how you would transliterate Yeshua into Greek and um, in keeping with the the closest Greek letters that would match the Hebrew letters and in keeping with the grammatical rules in the Greek for for names and so there, there was no conspiracy to try to change Jesus' name. This is the closest transliteration to Yeshua. But the other thing that was interesting about, about God's name that I noticed that I pointed out over here is that the Strong's number for the word God in the Greek is 2316. And I'll show you that. Okay, as you can see, the Strong's number for the word God in the Greek is Strong's number 2316. And the very first time that you see the word God used in the New Testament is in Matthew 1, 23, where it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, God is with us. And so this is the very first time you see the word God, which is Strong's number 2316, and it comes up in Matthew 123. And as I pointed out in this comment over here, this is technically the year 2016 because there's no year zero on the timeline. And so if they had put in a year zero, this would technically be the, the year 16. I believe that's why the number 16 comes up in some of the verses having to do with the second coming. But anyway, I just wanted to mention that. But the important thing is that there seems to be a pattern with God's name being associated with DNA. You see that the Strong's in the Greek is 2316 for the word God. It starts out with Matthew 1.23, the Strong's number for Jesus is 24.24, and Jesus had 24 chromosomes. The very first use is in Matthew 1.1, 1, 1, which looks like the number 11, which I believe represents DNA. And then you have Elohim's kingdom ending over here in Genesis 2.3, which looks like the number 23, and then the Lord God's kingdom beginning with Genesis 20 or Genesis 2-4, which looks like the number 24. And then the entire Bible begins with Genesis 1-1, which looks like the number 11, which looks like DNA, where it says God created the heaven and the earth. And we're told that the earth, in verse 2, is the abyss. And so I have a lot more to talk about. I want to get back to this amazing comment over here and this link. 
but I also want to talk about these links as well, but I'll have to do that in the next video. Thank you.